On September 14, 1959, the Soviets successfully landed the first spacecraft in human history on the moon. Well, crashed it into the moon. This spacecraft was named the Luna 2. This helped fuel the space race to the moon, but in that same year, a man was hired that would help in the race for football to take over as the number one sport in America, and it all revolved around the referee. Welcome to the Football History Dude Podcast where each episode is a journey back in time to learn about the rich history of the NFL. Your host is Arnie Chapman. Football is his passion, and he wants you to come along with him to explore the yesteryear of the gridiron. So hop on board his DeLorean, and let's get this baby up to 88 miles per hour. This time as we step up for DeLorean, the date is July 1st, 1925, and we are in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania a very important city in the history of our country. But this time I'm not talking about the birth of the nation. I'm talking about the birth of the man that would modernize the NFL officials. And his name is Art McNally, the former director of the NFL officials. But let's go back a little bit. You see, this guy, he graduated from Roman Catholic High School there in Philadelphia and Temple University. So I'm talking about at the beginning of his days, he was brought up with integrity, strictness, and be honest from an early lad. And it wouldn't stop there, because during World War II, he was a Marine Corporal. So he just has this toughness, professionalism, integrity, and all of that he would bring to the officiating arena. And I'm not talking all the way up until the NFL at this point in time. You see, he started off, after he got out of the military, working as a high school teacher at Central High School. He was also a coach there in the Philadelphia area for 18, 22 years or so, and he officiated football, baseball, and basketball games at every level. However, one thing that I want to bring up is he spent, even though this is an NFL podcast, he spent one year as an NBA referee. Overall in his career, he officiated more than 3,000 games in a 22-year period. He said that he carried an old-fashioned accountant book with him at all times. You know, he bought it right after he was discharged from the Marines back in 1946. He called this the book. His first entry was a sandlot football game between St. Anthony's and Climber Athletic Club, and these were at American and Luzerne Streets there in Philadelphia. The game was on October 3rd, 1946, and it was said that he earned five bucks. I mean, this is a quote from McNally, kind of describing what he thought about carrying his book around and everything. And when it's such, I thought that was good money for blowing a whistle, so I kept doing it. I just kept my referee shirt in the trunk of my car. I was on call seven days a week. Now, I'm telling you what, this is like a stone cold hustler. He's like, I got my t-shirt, my referee shirt, my whistle in the car. You got a game, bring me on. Give me cash, show that cheddar, and I will be there. Even though he would carry on throughout his career, in 1959, you know, they tapped his wrist to bring him up to the big leagues. I mean, well, that's baseball talks, but like I said, he officiated basketball, baseball, and football games. But the big leagues, now this was the big leagues of all big leagues in America. We're talking the NFL. And this would come on the heels of that. It was a rough season, then he said, when he was an NBA referee in 1958. McNally said this of the experience. It was my first exposure to fans and coaches who could really holler. I mean, he was done with the pros, he thought at that time. He was ready to go back to the, what he deemed, more calm environment of high school and college, you know, athletics. But then, the commissioner at the time, Burt Bell, he convinced McNally to try the NFL one more time. Well, try it for the first time, that is. And this is a quote from McNally, kind of describing how that conversation went. Burt came right to the point. He asked me, son... Do you like to work the Army-Navy game? I said, sure, who wouldn't? Then Bert said, in the NFL, every game is the Army-Navy game. The more I thought about it, I realized, yeah, that's the big leagues. If I'm going to be an official, I ought to try it. Ironically enough, this is a year that Bert Bell would pass away. We talked about this before. He was the owner at one point in time for the Eagles and the Steelers, then also the commissioner. And he passed away during a game between his two beloved teams. So I could say this, arguably, this was his greatest and last contribution that he made to the game before he passed away. It wasn't his biggest of all time, but it definitely was a major contribution, bringing Art McNally, who thought about not even joining the NFL, and bring him into the league. 
So upon arriving in the league in 1959, he was a seasoned official, but he hadn't really, you know, had that chance to join the big leagues, where he would be an official from 1959 to 1967. He was there for nine seasons, one as a field judge, and eight as a referee. But then in 1968, because due to man, they would promote him to supervisor of the officials, where he would hold that position from 1968 to 1991. It's all like, congratulations, son. You are no longer a fall and winter rental. You are now legit. Now help us take this officiating legend to the promised land. But think about it this way. 1968, we're in the midst of the AFL-NFL merger. So he would be the supervisor of the officials during that transaction period. So he would take on not only his guys that he already knew, he would have to deal with assimilating the AFL and the NFL officiating crews because you had a little bit of difference in some of the rules and bring them to one happy family. And last week we talked about Shorty Ray, you know, the man responsible for tinkering with the rules to create that excitement and safety for the fans. But Art took this up a notch. You know, this is uh, bringing me reminiscent of a story. Arthur's involved. Art, you know, is Art, but Arthur is a little bit different. We're going to talk about the father-son duo of the MacArthur's. And you're like, MacArthur's, I'm trying to think about what, he was a quarterback, a wide receiver, what was he? No, I'm not talking about the football MacArthur's. However, there ended up being a, uh, a ward after this guy later on. You know, it revolved around football, that is. I'm talking about Captain Arthur MacArthur. Now, he was the father. He was a Civil War hero. And he had a son by the name of Douglas MacArthur. Yes, General Douglas MacArthur. Best known for the command of the Allied forces in the Pacific back there in World War II. Let's go back to, you know, Captain Arthur MacArthur, the father. 1863, Battle of Missionary Ridge. This 18-year-old MacArthur Jr., he fought so valiantly, he was awarded the Medal of Honor. Then, let's flash forward a little bit to 1942. General Douglas MacArthur nominated a couple times before. He hadn't won it, but then in 1942, he also won the Medal of Honor for his defense of the Philippines during World War II. Now, this is where we bring it back, because this was the first ever father-son duo to both win Medals of Honor. And I liken it to Shorty Ray being similar to, you know, the father, and then also Art McNally being similar to the son. They both were huge and contributors to the NFL, as were these great heroes were to the United States of America back in the day. Arthur was like Shorty. He set up the foundation, and Douglas helped push the family over the edge in a big way, just like Art McNally would do. And we're going to get into that throughout the rest of this episode. But I wanted to remind you first, I left a link to the Shorty Ray episode in the show notes, which you can get through your podcast player or by heading to the footballhistorydude.com. Also, I ask that you subscribe for free to this show by mashing that little subscribe button on your podcast player of choice. That way you get the hottest, freshest off the press episodes each and every week. But let's get back to Art McNally. Just like Shorty Ray, he had a passion for the game and he wanted to get it right. And here's a quote that kind of summed up how he felt about that situation. I couldn't always be right. But I always tried to be honest. I was that way when I was working Sandlot games in Philadelphia, and I was that way in the NFL. I gave it my very best every time out. Again, he spent one season as a field judge and eight as a referee. And he was a hard worker that wanted to be out there as much as possible. Before his promotion to the supervisor of officials, he had many games, like I said, over 3,000 that he had officiated. And here's a quote kind of describing his uh, ambitious nature, let's just put it that way. And it goes as such. One year I worked 270 games, and after that I decided I'd cut it back. But the next year, I did 276. So we're talking about a guy who has full-time teaching, you know, gotta go deal with that throughout the year, but then also, moonlighting on the nights and the weekends, he's officiating football, baseball, and basketball games so he can hone his craft, he can practice his skills, he can become the best and get to that top of the mountain which he would end up becoming the leader of the officials, and he would take them to the next level. And it was his dedication to the game and his discipline that made him a perfect fit to be the head position for the officiating department of the NFL. Now let's go to 1968, his first year. Hit the ground running, you know, could be shaking in his boots, but he's like, no, I'm going to implement 
the first formal film study program so we can train and evaluate the NFL officials, so we can have that continuous improvement and we can always get better. Now, he had a lot of blowback, just like you will. Let's just throw it out there in a manufacturing firm where you want to do something else a different way. And once you got people going, well, that's the way we've always did it. That's my kind of way. And that's how I'm going to continue to do it because that's what I know best. You know, the whole, if it ain't broke, I ain't got to fix it kind of deal. But, well, it might not be broke. But at the same time, you've got these other guys over here and they're creating better, faster, more efficient ways of doing things. And they got better technology than you do. And at some point in time, yeah, you better believe it. They're going to leave you in the dust. Mr. Art McNally, he was well aware of this situation. So he told them he wanted to focus on consistency, and he also wants to focus on uniform mechanics throughout all the NFL officials. Again, remind you, this is 1968. This is like at the height of the AFL-NFL merger, where he's going to have to bring in two styles of officials. But ultimately, under his leadership, the NFL's officiating department would build the modern evaluation and grading system that we still have today for NFL officials. Sure, it might be tweaked a little bit, but he laid the groundwork for it. This evaluation and grading system is critical for building consistency and integrity of the game. Every official counts on the field, and grading that system must be made sure so that they can be doing their jobs right. Because if they're not, they gotta know about it. And yes, Mr. Art McNally, he was at the center of it all. He introduced these weekly evaluations in the system, and it would involve not just himself and his team, but it also involved the referee of the game, the NFL official observer, just would be up there in the press box kind of thing, and he'd also involve each team's coach, because he wanted to make sure all customers of this product, the officiating crew that is, were satisfied. And the ultimate goal of creating a much more uniform, streamlined process so the fans can be engaged. And what did he do? He partnered with the NFL Films to get the All-22 tape of each game, you know, so they could see all angles and everything that happened on the field. And he used this to help improve the game study of the officials to see what they did on the game at that time. And of course, there was some blowback because people like, well, I know what I'm doing. I've been doing this forever, man. You know, sit down, son, and you're just the new kid on the block, and I don't know what, but that's the way we always done things. But that wasn't so, because umpire Joe Connell, now he's a decorated veteran who was in many NFL championships and three of the first 12 Super Bowls. They were sitting there in a, you know, probably not sitting back in a sofa chair eating for Frito-Lays and bag of potato chips, whatever it is. They were just probably chilling out trying to figure out what could be doing so we can have a better chance at making successful calls. And he looked at the play and he said, hey, well, I called holding on this play. I shouldn't have done that. At that time, McNally knew if he could get Connell in his corner, you know, this decorated veteran, that he could probably help everyone else understand the benefits of having this new check yourself kind of film study. And we talked about this in the two episodes ago where we, the four step system, but We're not going to go into it in depth here. You can go back to two episodes ago, the uh, NFL officials one, and you can kind of figure out how that goes, or you can head to the website there. But let's just think about it like this. He would review all of the fouls, well, him and his team, by each ref. They would grade each foul on a scale, you know, how were they, if they called it, how well were they calling it. Then McNally would look for a place where he thought that there should have been a whistle, but it wasn't called. Then also they would grade each official on mechanics, and their positioning. And like I said, they would take this grade and they would combine it with the grades that the referee, the NFL observer, and each team's coach would give to compile one big report that they could hand out to the officials. And they could hold the standards to high levels of each official with this evaluation program. And Ed Hockley, he kind of has a quote that kind of describes what he felt. We know Hercules at Hockley, and he's the guy that we most of us in the modern era remember growing up, at least if you're in the 90s and the early 2000s kind of thing with those big old cannons on the side. But this is the quote that he said about the evaluation program that Art McNally put into place. Art revolutionized officiating through his grading system that held everyone accountable, while at the same time creating and supporting a system-wide teaching program that dramatically improved the quality of on-field officiating. 
His weekly training videos that all NFL officials watched were revolutionary in bringing all officials to the same page in what was and was not a foul, the proper mechanics, and how to do a continually better job of officiating the game. So at his peak, he was the head of a department that had five people that directed a staff of 112 officials. He was also known as the father of instant replay because he ushered the NFL into the age of instant replay, which, again, think about it. You've got all these officials. They don't want this, you know, instant replay thing highlighting what they did wrong on the field and if they didn't call it right. But with his leadership, he helped bring it through to make it beneficial to the game to keep it so the integrity of the call on the field remained the same. And he helped bring many more technologies to the game. And one such thing was he had a vision for a central command center of officiating. It didn't really happen until after he retired, but they called it, in his honor, the Art McNally Game Day Central. And speaking of his retirement from 1991, didn't take him a whole lot of time to get out of the retirement phase because in 1992, he accepted a position of supervisor of the officials for the World League of American Football. And he would stay even when he had that job as an NFL consultant all the way through 1994. Then he went back to the NFL officially in the office in 1995 as assistant to the supervisor up until 2007. But even then, he would stay close to the NFL and he continued to help out all the time. And some of the accolades that he received over his career was in 1987, they inducted him to the Pennsylvania Sports Hall of Fame. He was also the first recipient of the Gold Whistle Award from the National Association of Sports Officials in 1988. In 2002, former Commissioner Paul Tagliabue created the Art McNally Award. And from the Pro Football Hall of Fame site, The award is to honor an NFL game official who exhibits exemplary professionalism, leadership, and commitment to sportsmanship off the field. In 2003, he was the recipient of the Reds Bagnell Award for Contribution to Football. And in 2012, he was a recipient of the Pro Football Hall of Fame's Daniel F. Reeves Pioneer Award, where it gives, you know, talking about major contributors and groundbreaking type of deals here in the NFL and what they've made to advance the game. Now, he was only the eighth person to receive this award. And overall, he gave 58 seasons of the league's 99 seasons, which is more than half the entire existence of the NFL. And he had many other words, contributions over that over the NFL from the time he was in to the time he was out. And on the NFL's website, it stated that Art set his first dream was to be a baseball umpire. And although this was baseball's loss, it happened to be football's gain. But with that being said, I will let a quote from Ed Hockley explain how most people in the league think of Art McNally. And it goes as such. Art McNally belongs in the Hall of Fame because he quite frankly set the standard of integrity, the most important characteristic in any official for all NFL officials. Art was integrity personified and spread that characteristic to every official who put on the NFL stripes for the next 22 years, supervisor of officials, and on to this day as an assistant supervisor, consultant, and mentor. Every NFL official for the last 50 years has viewed Art McNally as the definition of integrity and father of modern officiating in the NFL. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode of the Football History Dude and were able to gain some knowledge nuggets about one of the most influential figures in NFL officiating history. To learn more about this episode and other topics from the history of the NFL, please head over to thefootballhistorydude.com. And now next week, we're going to get into and we're going to shift gears by talking about this upcoming week's current topic in the NFL and learn a little bit about the history of free agency in the league. But for now, dudes, I'm through if you're through. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Football History Dude. To make sure you're the first to get the next episode, please subscribe on your podcast player of choice and head on over to thefootballhistorydude.com for the show notes and more information on the history of the NFL. And remember, dudes, where we're going, we don't need roads.